All right, guys, and we are live here uh, with Altcoin Sarah. She's coming to us all the way from, where are you at exactly? From England. From England, coming to us from across the pond. My wife makes fun of my <laughs> British accent. She says it's terrible. So she says all my accents are terrible. She was actually so surprised when I did um, on, on my Trump videos where she said I actually did a good job of an impression because I can't do anything else. So. Yeah. <laughs> I love them. I absolutely love them and look forward to them. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, cool. Well, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, how you got involved in crypto and, um, you know, things like that. Um, so everyone who don't know me, I'm all Sarah and um, from all Combust ladies, the main channel is all Combust. We're not being sexist or anything like that. People get confused with it. It's basically content was made by ladies purely. It's just me. And I don't really mind it. I love making videos because it's always fun and it makes me learn a little bit. So I've been investing for a bit over a year now, to be fair, with crypto. And besides that, I'm a full-time civil engineer. So sometimes oh, wow. the job gets um, out of control. Like today, like I compl I wanted to sell Ripple, but I couldn't. Oh. So I've got a little... Please don't judge me. Please don't judge me. <laughs> That's okay. I do have some from back, back in the day. And I just kept it. And I wanted to sell it and I couldn't because I was so busy at work. I literally left at like six. Like, I know time difference is different, but yeah. Anyway, I started the hot topic of Ripple, so then I get interested. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll definitely um, get into Ripple here in a little bit. But, I, you know, I really feel you on what you said about your job. Um, and it, it's like crypto is one of these things, you just get into it and it's so hard to do anything else anymore. You know, it's like you just become so obsessed yeah. with it, you know? Like, I'm I'm having, like, some, I don't want to say anxiety, but it feels weird when I can't go on Twitter. Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm missing out or something, and I, I feel like I'm not going to know anything that's going on just because I'm not online for, like, 10 hours or something. Yeah. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah, this is something I've talked to a lot of people about in the crypto space, and it was something that I encountered with my job, which was, um, that I had before I was full time, I, I started feeling guilty, you know, I started feeling guilty because I was putting so much into crypto and I knew on some level it was taken away from what I was doing at my other job. And, and so like, I would do stuff like, I'd be like, okay, I'm only going to make videos at night. And then at night I would make videos instead of, you know, trying to do some during the day or whatever. And so I was like, all of my content I was creating at night, but it's still like, you, you can't really unplug from crypto. You can't really yeah, unplug from crypto Twitter, you know? I mean, you miss an hour, you miss a lot. It's part of you, doesn't it? Yeah. So, you know, for me, I just had to get to this point where I said, you know what? I'm just going to throw caution into the wind and, and just make it happen. And I know that's, that's an issue that a lot of people are running into right now that are getting really serious with crypto. Um, and, and, you know, if this was during a bull run... If we were, let's just say it was a nonstop, never-ending bull run. Hopefully, we're in one now. But uh, yeah, I know. Right. But if it, if it was like a nonstop, never-ending bull run, then I, a lot more people would be jumping into crypto full time. But obviously, with the way the markets have been, um, you know, there's just been a lot of questions about how stable everything is, and I think that's held a lot of people back from going full time crypto. Because I know several people who would definitely love to do it, but of course, when the market's down, it, it's hard to make that jump. So. Yeah, I totally, I'm one of those people, like, I absolutely love my job. I'm really happy doing it. Yeah. But I do spend a significant amount of time looking on the news, on Twitter, and looking for things to make a video about. Yeah. Because we obviously have to get a topic and stay on top of news and everything. And I do feel guilty sometimes, so I end up staying a bit longer. And then I end up being tired to make a video, so I end up not making one. So <laughs> it's just a crazy look. And I wish I could find a way around it, like... I haven't tried trading myself yet because I know that's how people try and make money yeah. uh, with crypto. But um, I'm thinking, so I'll be going to Canada in a couple of weeks. Okay. A spontaneous trip to Canada uh, to visit my friend. She's going to uni there. And I decided that over the eight hour flight, I'm going to spend some time learning on trading. So if you've got any recommendation for good trading courses or just advice, advices that I'll definitely take some on board. Yeah, well, I certainly can't give you any trading advice because I am the worst trader in the history of mankind. That's why <laughs> I just try to hold on. Like, for, for instance, for instance, yesterday, you know, I did this video on Sunday about the ETF and everything that was coming along with it. And I said, hey, guys, we're probably going to see an announcement this week 
on the ETF. And of course, yesterday we get the announcement, or just like just like I called, and um, I think there's been a lot of misinformation out there about. I mean, it, there's articles saying that it's not really a delay. There's articles saying it is. Whatever, whatever. I was expecting like a huge, massive dump, you know. And so I said, oh, before it dumps, I've, I heard the news. Like the first five minutes, I was like, let me tether everything. And I, I don't use tether. I use you know true USD, but. Um, I tethered everything, and then what freaking happened? I missed out on a giant pump. You know, like <laughs> classic. Every every time I tether, this happens. So I, I just need to go back to just just hodling. You know what I mean? So um, yeah. But speaking of you talking about the um, the ETF news and everything, and how market reacted to it, I think the reaction was really good. I, I like you said, I was expecting a massive down yeah. and new low of 2018. Which is why I haven't been buying more because I thought that might happen. I'm not saying it might not. Um, but yeah, I think every time that Bitcoin actually doesn't fall lower, it just purely shows its strength and the durability purely of it. And that it's not just, you know, a bubble, as most of people say. Yeah. I, well, I think that at this point where we're at with the ETF, with all the negativity about it, I think most of the money realizes that we're going to get delayed all the way to February. And I mean, a lot of people, you know, throw out that February date because they've heard people say it. But the, the reason why people say February is because it's February 27th is 240 days after the initial filing of the application. And that's the last possible moment they can delay until. So I think a lot of people just are taking it for granted right now, saying like, we're going to get delayed until that comes out. And so a lot of people are of the opinion that the the dip uh, that the the price is baked in the the delay is baked into the price basically mm -hmm. that people are already expecting the delay so that's why it, it didn't dump it did have like a little flash crash though yesterday it did yeah it did I agree uh, but you were talking about February I thought the whole hype about February was because that will be a over 400 days of a bear market, which is the longest yeah. that happened in 2013 to 2015. So I thought that's why February was significant to crypto. Well, I, I mean, I, got that wrong. <laughs> I mean, there, there, there may be some element of that in terms of the actual market itself and, and the bull run and why people think that it could be bullish at that time. But there's, there's more to it, which is, um, so like all the important dates with the, when we talk about the ETF, we're talking about the CBOE, VanEck, SolidX um, ETF. That's the, the one everybody thinks will get approved. CBOE is the first one that had the futures contracts um, and things like that. So um, that is the, the one. It was filed on July 2nd. So from July 2nd, they had 45 days to yeah. make a decision or make a delay. So that came on August 16th was that decision date. The next date after that, was September 30th, which would have been 90 days after the initial application is filed. The next date is December 29th. It's 180 days. And then the last possible day they can make a decision is February 27th, 240 days after the application was filed. So um, it's it's pretty interesting. And, and a lot of people just think that the precedent that the SEC has set is that they're almost always going to wait until the last possible minute to make a decision on anything. So it's not necessarily like purely reflective on crypto and the Bitcoin ETF. It's more reflective like that's just kind of how the SEC handles business. And especially when you add in the fact that they just added in a fifth commissioner um, or replaced one of the commissioners. And so now you got this guy who's brand new on the job, uh, Trump appointed commissioner. And like, can he come in in the first week? Be like, oh yeah, let me do all the research and let me make a decision on this giant thing that could, you know, be the thing that's, spurs on oh, yeah. yeah you know what i mean so um but i don't know a lot of people do think that february is going to be you know when things will turn around i'm certainly hoping that things are turning around right now so um yeah. i mean i'm i'm so tired of this market like the, okay. the green the green that was going on right now over the last 24 hours build up this excitement in me that i had like back in january december that i missed so much it was every like, day too <laughs> it's like it's so addictive Honestly, I was sitting there and refreshing, and I was waiting to make a tweet for Ripple to flip in Ethereum, and it happened, obviously. I think it happened twice throughout the day, which is crazy. And now Ethereum is, like, up 18%, because, obviously, you know, you can't let Ripple... Yeah, you can't let it... <laughs> Let's see where we're at right now. 
Yeah, Ethereum's back in number two right now for sure. XRP is around 57 cents. It was up over 60 earlier. Ethereum up to, golly, we are freaking pumping right now. Yeah, I know. Like, I think I'm wasting time here just sitting in and some. <laughs> I know, golly. We got so many double digit pumps today. Well, I don't know. Like, I, I, I made a little prediction. I made a little prediction um, that. Uh, basically, after we got this ETF delay announcement, that that would be the bottom. You know, I, I made this prediction last week. I said once that happens, but I was expecting to stay around there a lot longer, or go down a little bit more. Um, so because like one thing that's really been hurting the markets, I know like I talk about these dates to death, but one thing that's really been hurting the market is like this cloud that's been hanging over it with the ETF. There's my hand. This cloud. Yeah. Um, because so, so you had, you had the application filed in July, you had the first, the first announcement in August and the second announcement in September. So you got July, August, September, boom, boom, boom. The markets are doing well. We get that announcement. It pushes it down. The good thing, what's up, James? Good to see you. The good thing about, um, this delay is that the next day is not till December. So we've got three months to be able to move without kind of like this impending dread of like what's going to happen with an announcement this month, you know? So, you know, I, I'm certainly looking, I think today's great. Like, yeah, it's, it's a great pump today for sure. I don't think we're going to continue, unless we're about to go parabolic out of nowhere, I don't think we're going to continue to see these pumps. I think this is a good kind of like just Kickstarter to get us going. And then I'm, I'm really looking at it for us to have incremental gains through the end of the year, maybe get back over 10,000, 15,000. And then in that January, February range, we really pick it up. I think we're about two months to two to three months behind the pace we were at this time last year. So last year, things really started kicking off September, October, November. I'm looking this year for things to really start kicking off December, January, February. Um, and that's kind of, you know, that's, that's my opinion on, you know, kind of what I think um, we finally got some people on the chat here. Uh, what is, yeah, what is up? They're talking about back. What's up, young, dumb, uh, young, dumb crypto. Good to see you, bud. Yeah. No, nobody knows what's going on with the market. <laughs> I agree with you. It's crazy. Um, somebody in here is, what's that? They know what's happening in their line. Oh, for sure. That's what, like, I'm, I like when I can kind of predict stuff and like it happens cause I'm like, oh yeah, you know, but I know it's just like total shooting darts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, total validation, you know? Um, but it's really just throwing darts. I mean, we, and that's why, like, I don't do any TA. I don't do any technical analysis. I I'm, I'm, I know some people that are into it and tell me a little bit, bit about it. But I'm just more, what's up, Stan? Uh, I'm just more on the fundamental side. And I just kind of read what's going on with the, you know, there, there are trading programs that are built on sentiment, that are built on uh, social media mentions, and things like that. I can't remember the name of the project. There's a project that's doing that. So there's a lot more to factor in than just the charts. Mm. Yeah, I'm, like I said at the start, I'm not really into trading. I'd love to be into it. I just, I just, if I hear a hype about a certain project, I just do the research, see what it is, put my own opinion. If I think it's iffy, I'll, I'll put something, but not much because I'm not entirely sure about it. But what are your favorite projects, actually? Um, what are your top three? What? My top three? Um, my top three right yeah. now are, uh, I mean, if we're excluding Bitcoin, let, let's exclude Bitcoin. I'm, I'm not a maximalist by any... I don't know. It depends on your definition of a maximalist. You know, the, the definition of a maximalist, I think, it changes from person to person. Like, some people think it's you only think Bitcoin will survive... And then some people think that means you think Bitcoin will continue to be number one forever, which I do think. I do think that, but I'm not. I think ultimately we'll, yeah, I think ultimately we'll have anywhere from 20 to 100 projects that survive long term. I think it's probably closer to 20, but um, as far as altcoins, I don't know. You know, my baby has always been ZRX. Like, I really love ZRX, but, you know, the, the only thing that's caused me, I thought about making a video about this. I haven't done it yet. But the only thing that's made me now a little bearish on ZRX is the fact that with all the Ethereum problems and the scalability problems um, that it's having, if Ethereum's not able to fix the scalability and let's say that the platform just goes away, whether that's five years, two years, three years, whatever it might be, 
then almost all of the ERC-20s are going to be fine because they can just move to another platform. But ZRX is built to exchange ERC-20 tokens. And so, yeah, if, if those were to go away... so. Um, in the short term, I'm still definitely really bullish on ZRX. I think that once I do believe it's going to go on Coinbase. Um, basic attention token, basic attention token is like um, ZRX was my favorite project in terms of potential, but basic attention token is my favorite project in terms of what I actually like and usability functionality. Um, it's already being used. I use Bray Browser every day, um, so I really like basic attention token. And then, um, so so I'm going to say. Not ZRX, because of the reason why I just said right now. Uh, I'm going to say basic attention token, ontology, and I go back and forth. Uh, Cardano is the one I want to say, but they've got such a slow roadmap. Cardano is one that you know gets a lot of excitement in it, but um, I'm going to say Monero. I, I think Monero is going to be around for a long, long time. Um, I prefer Dash. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's something I talked about on a live stream. Uh, it, <laughs> have you have you not heard about all the um all the thing all the stuff going on with them and um you know I don't know I saw I saw a video like it's a pretty popular video about the beginnings of Dash that were really sketchy and the same people who were involved in it are still involved in it so I'm not trying to hate on it or cause any fud I'm just saying no, no, I get it, I get it. I I've had some questions about it recently. What okay. do you? Um, I, it's just one of those that it happened. Got over it. They they proved themselves to me. Uh, okay. What I really. I, I think that if a project fails, fail now. This is a time to fail. Yeah. The bear market is a time when you can repair yourself and try and fix all the bugs. And as soon as you do it, I mean, no one is perfect. And if a project can repair themselves, then that makes me just believe them more because they want to improve. They're not just there to raise, like, do you like EOS? No. Good. So, <laughs> no, no, I, I, I hate it. <laughs> I really hate it. They raise so much money. I know. And they disappoint so much. I mean, that's what I mean. Like, and people still believe in it. Like, yeah. I'm not trying to spread any thought about EOS because people might say it. I'm just, I'm just saying what I think. And yeah. I'm so disappointed with the EOS, honestly. So, so disappointed with it. Well, I, I got into a huge argument yesterday with somebody. Um, it was in like a private Telegram group I'm in. And uh, okay. I, got, I got into, what's up, Fat Bitcoin? Good to see you, bud. Um, but I got into a huge argument with a guy. He's another well-known influencer. He's got a lot more subscribers than, than I do. Um, he's he, no one who, you know, he's not one of my crypto bros that a lot of people know that I hang out with and stuff, you know. But um, he's never been on my channel. But we got into a huge argument about it. And he was, I don't know, the whole argument was basically he was saying that, you know, um, Dan Larimer is a billionaire and he's successful. And I can't really say that, you know, like I should say, oh, EOS is going to be successful. I call it EOS. Some people call it EOS. But, uh, you know, the EOS is going to be successful because he's a billionaire. And I'm like, no, that doesn't make any sense. Like, no, like there's plenty of billionaires out there who have failed businesses everywhere, you know, and mm -hmm. Um, I make argument. I don't think Steam is Steam is the best decentralized social media we've seen to date. But I mean, would you call MySpace a success? Like, yeah, you might. I, like, yeah, it was pretty successful at a time. But it was back like then, but no one really remembers it. Like, and that's what Steam is going to be. Don't even know. Yeah, that's in my opinion. That's what Steam is going to be, and um, you know, the the same goes for BitShares. So, um, you know, I I got into a huge argument with a guy. He did end up apologizing to me later on, which was kind of cool, but. Um, you know, I, I don't know. People are really passionate about projects and I like, like we can have a conversation about any coin, like you and me, me and anybody, we can talk about any coin, but don't come at me sideways. You know what I mean? Like don't come at me sideways because I have opinions on your project, you know? So I'm sure you probably encountered that. That's why probably when you said something about EOS, you're like, Oh, I'm not trying to cause fun, you know? Cause you know, you know, the backlash you're going to get, but we're, if you're an influencer, you're one of two things. Like, there's only two reasons why you're an influencer. Either because you're an expert on something. You can be an influencer if you're an expert. Or because people like your opinions and they want to know your opinion. It, there's really nothing in the middle, you know. So, um, you know, I think I think we should be free free to speak about it. So what, what do you think about that? Well, I personally think that people should separate their emotions from their investments. That's mm -hmm. first of all. You see so many people in love with investments and they literally blindfolded and you don't really see what's really happening like with yeah. Verge 
Um, that was terrible. Can can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is okay. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, good. Um, yeah. Just double checking. So, like, first, they made such a massive ha- pump and about you know the adult website and stuff, and then people still believe in it. Like, I don't know how much of a more of a scam can you be? Like, more than that. Like, I absolutely. There's not many things I dislike or hate, but I think Verge is on top of my list that I, I'm not entirely sure what you think about them and just get away from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah Verge is <laughs> Verge is one that was one of the first altcoins I bought, actually. Verge and Ripple both, two of the first ones I bought. I did, I did own some Verge, and I, I will totally admit to it. it was, yeah. Yeah, I was a newbie, and I didn't really... Like differentiate legit. I didn't know what to look for in a project. No, well, but those problems, like, but yeah. there were no there were no bad projects in the bull run. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, looking back, we can say like, oh yeah, that was a bad project. But all you saw was a price. All I saw was a price. I've been in Bitcoin since like uh, for a long time, but I haven't been into altcoins until I got an altcoin same time everybody else did. You know, and so in terms of you know what I was looking for in a project to invest in, I was looking for something that had you know, uh, that could get pumps on social media. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, and Verge did a really, really, really good job of that. I remember, do you remember like back in December when they had that, uh, the Verge whale guy? There, yes. yes, that guy was crazy. <laughs> he was like meeting with John McAfee and then he was sharing like private messages between him and McAfee where they were going at each other and that guy just totally disappeared. I don't even know whatever happened to him. He closed his account. He said he got hacked or whatever. But there was that going on and he was, he was pumping the project up and then all of a sudden... Um, well, he kept saying the whole time, like, just wait for the Wraith protocol. That was the thing. Whatever the Wraith protocol was, that was what was supposed to just make the price go to the moon. And then they released it, and it didn't even do anything for the price. And didn't it, like, release some of the privacy features? Like, the actual yeah. release for people were spending, yeah, the transactions. That was so embarrassing. It was. And that's, you know, the, but, but really what that showed us is how important the marketing was for a project, you know? And that if you have really good marketing and your project sucks, you, you're going to do okay. But I think long-term, like you said, right now it's really it's really good for, um, like you said, it's really good for a lot of these projects to, if they're going to die, go ahead and die during a bear market. But I actually think that that's not, I, I think we're probably one to two bull runs away from these projects running out of money and, and, and going, you know. So I think we probably... People say, oh, well, the market's mature now. Like, yeah, all of us that have been in it are mature, but the newbies are not going to be. We're going to have to go through all this again, you know? I think another five years till the market actually matures. Like, yeah, I agree. Like about a full, like, maturity. I'd say three. I think I think probably like three, three to four, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Four. Let's put it four. There you go. I like it. I like it. Um, but yeah, it's just crazy. Like, there's so many people asking me, like, even my friends being like, oh, you're so into crypto. I saw your videos. How did you get into it and everything? I want to invest. What do I do? And people are learning about it. And I always, I always say Bitcoin because it's the safest, this is the safest yeah, investment possibly you can make right now, I think. And it works. It's, it's what started all without Bitcoin. We wouldn't have been here. And I'm not Bitcoin maximalist. I just, yeah, it's just, you know. It is what um, it is, you know. It is what it is. Like you can't argue. Bitcoin is the one, not Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin. Bitcoin right. Just no core, just Bitcoin. Wait, wait. Bitcoin Cash is not the real Bitcoin. I'm sorry. It's actually not. <laughs> oh, but I went to Bitcoin.com and I bought some, and they gave me Bitcoin Cash. <laughs> what an idiot! I'm so sorry. I know. I know. I know. It's so funny. Oh. So, what's your story? How did you get into crypto then? Okay, so I got into Bitcoin in 2012. Um, people on my channel will probably hear, tired of me hearing this, <laughs> telling this story, but ba- ba- no, it's okay. <laughs> I, I feel like I tell it all the time, but I guess you know because I'm making videos. I know everything I say. You know how your subscribers are. You don't. You don't. They don't watch every video. Most of them don't. I do have some that do, but so in 2012, um, I was I run a ticket business called FrontPageTickets.com. I still have that website to this day, and I advertise on Craigslist. It's what I've always done, and. Cri- I had an auto poster that would, I was posting like 800,000 ads a day back in the day. It was a long story, but I had to have something that would post ads automatically. So I had an auto poster. Well, technically that is against the terms and services of Craigslist. They're probably going to sue me now. But, um, <laughs> but uh, so basically I was using this auto poster and this guy, uh, Craigslist had the government shut his website down. 
And so he couldn't take he couldn't take credit card payments anymore. And he said, for now on, I have to take this thing called Bitcoin. And this would have been in December of 2012. It was $13 at that point. And, uh, you know, I bought a bunch of it to make a bunch of payments with. And um, I had made all the payments and then basically left some in an account, didn't even think about it. And then I went to go check it one day and it was worth like, you know, almost $3,000. And I was like, dang, you know, but... I never in my wildest dreams thought about holding on to it. Like, that wasn't even an option. Like, so this would have been about a year later, you know, I was like, I need to sell this, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, $3,000 is a nice little come up, you know? And so um, I sold it all, and then I, you know, basically kept up with it. Um, haven't really, I, I've, because I've still been using that software, I've still had to make payments with it over, over time. But um, that's how I got into it, and uh, I've always stayed up with the price, but my big mistake was not understanding what it was and, and not sitting there and saying like, hmm, if this guy is willing to take payment in Bitcoin, then maybe, and the price is going up, maybe I should invest in it or whatever. So, um, but I, that that's a lot of what motivates me not to do that again. And that that's really what has driven me into crypto full time is looking at the mistakes that I made. And I could be, a, I should be a billionaire with as much as I bought. I mean, I probably, I probably had, more. Yeah, I mean, what's that? No, I just, I just thought you, you'd say like you've got twenty five Bitcoin or something left from back then. It w no, it would be nice. I mean, but I sold, but you know, I had all mine in Mount Gox, and I sold all mine right before Mount Gox crashed. So it it turned out to be good timing, and I mean, they're paying people back now, so maybe I could have got it back eventually. But you know, it it all worked out the way it could. But I mean, I probably had. I haven't actually sat and worked out the numbers, but I mean, $13 a Bitcoin, and I probably had about $10,000 in it at that time. Like, yeah, it's, uh, but it's, it's that pain. It's that, it's that pain that motivates me, you know? Is that pain that motivates me to, um, you know, continue to stay involved? And, you know, I like to think things have worked out for the best because I've, I've got a platform, you know, here in crypto and, um, I love all my subscribers. I love all my people. I love this life I'm living. I'm going to these different conferences and stuff. So, you know, looking back, like, yeah, it'd be nice to be on a yacht, but I like the life I'm living. So, you know, I'm cool That's with good. it. That's good. It's your happiness, all that matters. Yeah. Well, I got my family. I got my family, you know, got got my dogs. <laughs> that, that's I the most important thing. Well. So, my wife didn't I leave me. Yeah, my, my wife didn't leave me for somebody with more Bitcoin. So, I'm like pretty happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Does she own any? Uh, no, not personally. So, um, but you know, you know how it is. What, what's yeah, mine is hers. Yeah, you're I've been trying to, she might be watching. I don't know. She watches some of my live streams. She, she's getting a little more invested in it. So, um, maybe not actually financially, but she's, you know, she's starting to understand it a little better and things like that. So somebody asked me if I had a billion dollars, what would I do? Um, if I had a billion dollars, if I had a billion dollars, I would buy a football team. That's what I would do for sure. That's it. American football team. American I wouldn't, football. yeah, I wouldn't mess with soccer. That's what we call it. <laughs> <laughs> I call American football real football. No, football is the real football. Yeah, I know. I, I got like 75% of my viewers are international. So, um, so how about you? How, how did you get into it? Um, basically, um, so I actually got through my boyfriend. So he was used to buy crypto, buy Bitcoin actually, and buy stuff on the, Ah, oh, it's gonna sound so bad. Not on a dark web, but just buy like hacked Netflix accounts yeah. with it. And it was the best way to pay Bitcoin for it. Um so he bought it when it was like back five hundred dollars or something and he didn't know much about it, just like yourself. And then the price are going up and yeah. I got annoyed that I'm missing out on it, that he's making money when he's sleeping and I'm not <laughs> pure jealousy. Which is that FOMO? I was like, you're not making money, and I'm not. Um, so I basically started reading a little bit more about it, and then I was like, this is genius. Like, this is yeah. a genius concept. And I just started investing, and I've made significant amount of dumb decisions to know what to avoid in the future. That's definitely the case. But yeah, um, loads of people at my work, I also invested small amounts of money. I've probably got a bit too much in it. Didn't invest more than I should have, but... Um, yeah, it's, it's good to see that people even on my work, where it's like not many of us, like 20 of us, I think in the office. And there's like three more people of me that also invested and it's just from themselves and they're invested into Stellar. Yeah. Uh, Stellar is a good one. I like Stellar. 
about it. Oh. No, nah, I love it. Love it. What are your What are your favorite projects? Oh, I was waiting for that question back. It'll be um, one of my first babies I invested in, being Neo. Oh, okay. One of my deeper lows being B Chain. Okay, I dig and, it. Um, number three, I always struggle with the number three. I know, me too. You know? Yeah. <laughs> oh God, what can I think of? Um, BitConnect. Yeah, BitConnect. Really it's got to be BitConnect, all right? Oh yeah. But unfortunately, I don't know what happened to my BitConnect, but it is somehow it's <laughs> nothing right now. I think I've done something wrong in my portfolio because it's absolutely worth nothing. I'm really confused <laughs> with what's going on. I don't know. Hey, like, hey, I'm hey. Like, I'm like, so much, but then nothing. Like, I don't really understand it. It's so confusing. <laughs> well, what? If, okay, so. Uh, no, so but it's, Go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, so what? how are you feeling about Neo? Because I've I've really turned on Neo. I'm not favorable for it at all anymore. I mean, but I'm for ontology. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like the, the focus has shifted to ontology. And so in some way, like, yeah, I'm bullish on what they're doing over there overall. But unfortunately, like, I just think that ontology is getting all the focus and Neo is, uh, I don't I don't know if it's ever going to recover. Yeah, I'm, I'm starting to feel a little bit like that because I'm not really hearing much about them fixing the bugs that they had. They had massive issues with their um, with their systems and it's just they're not doing anything to improve it right now and I'm getting a little bit disappointed by it because I honestly thought that the you know the Ethereum of China, the Ethereum yeah. pillar is really gonna deliver and they I are too. letting me down a little bit. And I'm not gonna lie, but I haven't really had time to put my head around D apps right now. Um the yeah, platforms and uh, just, I'm, I'm hoping that they're gonna sort themselves out. That they're being quiet because they're trying to deliver something, and I might be completely blindfolded. I think, <laughs> I think they're being quiet because they're. I, I I think they're being quiet because they're trying to deliver ontology. <laughs> you know. I should probably fix like shift my focus. For not 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 financial advice, not financial advice, but. <laughs> <laughs> but I had I mean I had somebody on my chat ask me. You know they said, um, you know. Hey, I just bought a bunch of Neo. It's really low. Do you think that was a good idea? And I was like, No, I I don't think it's a good idea, unfortunately. And it, I've had, you know, this is the thing about being an influencer and having videos out there. Like, I got a lot of videos where I'm out there saying I think Neo will be number two. Uh, they'll pass Ethereum. And then now, over the last three months, it's just like things have so dramatically changed on my perspective on how I look at it. And a lot of people's have too. I'm not. I'm certainly not the only person who, you know, feels this way. But um, you know, it's it. So, uh, Da Hongfei, who's a, the CEO, obviously of OnChain, the founder of Neo. Um, I don't, I don't know exactly where someone was telling me that um, he came out and like basically gave Neo the vote of confidence. Like, oh no, we're sev we're definitely still working on Neo, and it's still going really well. We're not giving up on it. And like, that's a thumbs up. Yeah, yeah. That that's a giant red flag to me. <laughs> you know, like it, it reminds me over here of like um, in our American football, the the real football. It. <laughs> Soccer is like the Bitcoin cash. It's like the original vision, but nobody oh buys into it. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, American football is like a mixture of rugby and football. And you've got like a break every two minutes. Yeah. Time. Oh, oh well, fair enough. <laughs> fair, <laughs> fair enough. We got too many commercials. I'll, I'll hear you out on that. But, um, you know, in, in American football, when an owner of a team comes out and gives the vote of confidence, like – oh, no, our coach is totally fine. He's definitely going to be here. He always gets fired the next week, you know? And so it, the, the fact that he felt like he had to come out and say that, like that almost, you know, sh shows me that there, there may be something to all this. So, and I, like, I got some sources, you know what I mean? I got some sources that know the situation a little better than, um, you know, just reading an article, and that's the general sentiment. So it's it's uh, very concerning to me. So, But VeChain I like. I love VeChain. Um, a lot of people know my rap video that I made. Uh, I bought 10 racks of V-Chain. That's a little line in the song. Have you seen my rap video? I haven't. Yeah, blockchain, blockchain, blockchain. You guys should all look it up. Animated BitBoy video. I've got a new animated rap song. Well, it's half singing, half rap. Coming out probably next week. I'm still trying to animate it, but the song is done. So, um, Yeah, we do, we do a lot over here at the channel. Yeah, we do so much. We do a lot of things. 
So, um, someone saying my Trump video was funny. That's funny too. I like that. Thank you. Um, so, okay. So another question I have for you, a lot of people in the chat or at least one person's asked several times. Um, and I, I think I, I'm going to probably know your answer. My answer would probably be about the same, but I don't know. How low do you think Bitcoin is going to go? They're asking, do we think it'll go below 5k? Um, what, what do you think? What's your opinion? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. No one really knows what's going to happen, but I don't think Bitcoin will go below 5k. Um, if it was to follow how low it went down during the worst bear market out there, it went down 93%, I think. It would have meant that Bitcoin would have to go to around 1400. That's obviously not going to happen. Yeah. Like, that would, this would be absolutely insane. And I think even I would start questioning it a little bit. Uh, but I don't. I think um, Bitcoin's proving it really strong above six k, and I don't think yeah. it will go below six k. If we do, then it's not going to be lower than five eight, um, five thousand eight hundred. And uh, I like Bitcoin above six k. I prefer it much more than over than seven and a half eight. The the in between six and nine, mm -hmm. and the psychological ten, um, and the next one twelve, obviously. Uh, so yeah, I don't think it's gonna go much lower as it could have. I mean, Ethereum's been absolutely plummeting over the last few weeks. Yeah. I mean, oh god. I mean, I was investing in Ethereum and I did not think it's gonna go that low. Like honestly. No, me neither. I well, once once it dipped down below two fifty, I I thought probably one hundred and seventy would have been the floor. I think it went down to one sixty. I was really surprised it went down that far, but. You know, and this is where really the difference in my mind between TA and FA comes in. Like, I think so much of this trading is common sense. Like, okay, could you imagine a hundred dollar Ethereum? Well, no, no one can imagine that. Why? The same reason why you say you can't imagine a fourteen hundred Bitcoin because people would be selling their children. Like, I love my children. I would not sell my children, but people, <laughs> but like, I would not sell my children. Like, they're the best. I don't care. Even if it was a billion dollars, I wouldn't sell my children. Anybody? Why Bitcoin was five dollars? What's that? What if Bitcoin was five dollars? Would you sell your children? <laughs> no, not even then. Not even then. I would be homeless on an island with my children if I had to be. But Aww. yeah, yeah, I love my kids, love my wife. But um, you know, in all seriousness, though, you know that's the common sense aspect of it. Like once it once it hits a certain point, like people are gonna go insane. You know, people are the same thing that happened on the other end when we were everybody was fomoing at the top. People were taking out yeah. mortgages and obviously they got wrecked. But if it dipped down to a level that low. People are going to go insane to buy. That's like me. Like I hadn't bought Ethereum for the purpose of buying Ethereum in a long time, but when it went under two hundred dollars, I was like, if this thing gets down to one seventy, I'm buying it. You know, so um, I did, and I made some money on the way back up, which was really great. There's just the common sense of it. When, <laughs> when everybody is talking about, you know, like whenever here's a good indicator to me when everybody's talking about like, oh, it's definitely going to go down this low, and then everybody's going to buy it. It's never going to get that low, you know what I mean? Because people are saying it's going to zero. It's a bubble. These are the indicators. It's about time to buy something. Yeah, like that's what was happening with Ethereum. And surprise, it bounced back. I wonder why it bounced back. I don't know because maybe everything is pretty much made on Ethereum. Just, just idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it seemed like there was just, you know, when things start going down, there's definitely like a lot of fud. What's up, Andy? Good to see you. Uh, Andy from the Coin Boys has joined us, my friend. So. Oh, hello, Andy. Hi, Andy. <laughs> yeah, they're great. They're great. They were on my they were on my podcast. We just released my new podcast uh, this morning, so they were on. They're always great guests. But and he says my beard. Gosh, oh, I'm last place. You know. Did you not know that I'm the worst scorer? I thought that was universally known. Like, but but once again, I did. Uh, Andy says hi. But once again, I did win Naomi Brockwell's quiz show last week. So I'm going to be in the final round with Charlie Lee and some other people. So, you know, I, I, I've proven myself. Stop showing up. Stop showing up, okay? We yeah. get it. You're good. Well, my Pokemon score is so bad, I got six out of 14 right. And I accidentally got those six right. I easily could have got zero, I think. So, um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, you did good. You did better than me. That's all I know. They keep me updated on if I'm still in last place or not. That's all I know. I I don't want to believe someone will call that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I think someone could uh, accidentally 
could accidentally beat me. So, um, but I totally forgot what I was talking about. I have no clue where we were at in the conversation. So let's move on. Whatever we were talking about, let's forget it. Yeah. Let's talk about Ripple yeah. today. What are your What are your feelings on Ripple XRP specifically, um, or the greater company at large? What are your thoughts on it? Um, are you an anti Ripple person? Do you think it's good that people are entering this way? What do you feel about you know the way that it's pumping compared to everything else? Let, let's let's unpack this a little bit. So, like I said at the start of the video, I did hold some Ripple and I did make some money on it, luckily. Um, but I think the case with Ripple is that it's one of those coins that has already reached its all-time high and it might not go back there. Mm. And Ripple is just going to stay below a dollar or about a dollar because their supply is absolutely enormous. It is. And it just, it, it doesn't deserve to be above a dollar, I think. There is, it's, people are saying that it's not a centralized, it's not the most centralized but it is. Yeah. I'm sorry, but it is. Like, it's against everything that crypto is, and it's trying to help something that we're trying to get away from. Like, it's really confusing aspect for me. Just go into Stellar. Stellar is a nice project. It's like the, the, the better sibling of Ripple. Yeah. Everyone likes them, and Ripple is just in a corner bullying everyone. Probably. Yeah. What do you think about Ripple? Because I might be saying stuff and you will just end up arguing. I, well, yeah, we're going to argue because uh, Ripple's my biggest bag. I'm riding it to the moon. I love it. Um, I, s centralized for the win. Screw decentralization. Screw cryptocurrency. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was playing for like, I saw you were like, what do I do? I don't know what to do. Uh, um, what's up, Mike? Good to see you. Um, yeah, so the, my feelings on Ripple is I don't, well, I do own some Ripple. I own like a little bit. I own what is left in my, I own what is left in my toast wallet that I can't get rid of because of the minimum threshold. I think a lot of people get that. It's like, I, I think I've got like 12 or $13 in there. But, um, you know, I made a decision a long time ago, um, basically through my crypto journey that I wasn't going to buy into Ripple anymore. Um, and personally, I'm not going to buy into it. Uh, because of obviously what it what it represents, I'm all for anybody who wants to buy it buying it. If if you're in this to make money, but for me as a crypto influencer, like I have a platform that's a little bit bigger than just I'm trying to make gains on a portfolio, and so I I like to put my money where my mouth is and yeah. say you know what, the, it is centralized. Sixty one percent of the nodes are centralized. Now I do have to be fair to them and say they say that they have a plan to decentralize, that over time, they're going to lessen the percentage of the nodes that they have that are centralized. So we'll have to see. Like a lot of people think that's just nonsense and that they'll never do it because they're in bed with the banks. But, you know, and I was talking about this with my friend Crypto Stash today, who's a good buddy of mine. And we kind of had a little disagreement about some of this. Totally civil though, of course. And, you know, he was saying that it's the antithesis of Bitcoin. It's the exact opposite of what we should want. And I was saying like, Yes, I agree with that, but if this is the vehicle that gets more people into crypto so that then once they get in, they can go down the rabbit hole and maybe not just become part of the Ripple army and learn about crypto because, you know, Ripple was the second, I bought Litecoin first because it was on Coinbase. Ripple was the first non-Coinbase project yeah. I bought, you know, and so that is... I think I'm the same actually. Yeah. I think the IOTA Ripple. One of those two was the first one that I actually bought off Coinbase and wasn't, you know, widely available. But I totally agree with you. Like, I mean, they are, banks are not going anywhere and no right. one's hiding it. Crypto's trying to improve it, so it's blockchain. And if we can help banks a little bit, make our lives less miserable, like sending money across the borders, go for it. And I've got nothing yeah. against it. I just, I just don't want them to be claiming like, like that they're the cryptocurrency because I don't really think they are. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's almost like they just slid this little coin in there so they can say they're in crypto or something, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's all they're doing. Like, the tech is great and I'm all pro it. Like, uh, there's going to be ages till we start paying with crypto. And I hope it really happens by the time I'm alive or like a granny with the Bitcoin. That'd be quite cool. <laughs> <laughs> when I was younger, we used to use Skrilla. I don't know. Do you know what that's from? 
that's 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 from the Pornhub Verge commercial they made. There was like uh, it was an old guy. He, it was like when they made their big announcement that the Pornhub was taking Verge, and they were like, they had this old guy, like a grandpa. He's like, when I was your age, we used to trade metal coins, and we used to call it Skrilla. So. Oh my god! I saw this. I remember it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say that's like I, I've. That's one of my little catchphrases. I use Skrilla all the time now since then. So. Skrilla. Yeah. Amazing. But I think I, I think ultimately though, when it comes to Ripple, like it's it's going to, in in XRP, like if the point of XRP, right, and the point of what Ripple is trying to do is to make bank transactions faster. Ripple's not trying to have the same kind of platform that like Stellar is trying to have. This is where they're they're kind of diverging a little bit. Diverging, that's right. Yeah, going opposite from each other. But they're they're splitting they're splitting paths right now, okay? But you know, the thing about that is if cryptocurrency is able to be successful in in blockchain and what we're trying to do to take away the power of the banks to take away the need for the middleman and the credit card tra- transaction, uh, the credit card transaction fees and all that, then ultimately that means that long-term Ripple will fail. One or the other is going to win because you can't really have this world where half the people are using crypto long-term and then the other half are still trading. You know, it would probably still be digital funds and banks eventually. But we're looking for freedom from the current system, and so you really can't have both of them succeed. So that's why, like short-term, I say, hey. You know, I don't mind people coming into the space through Ripple. Of course, Stat, my friend Crypto Stash was saying like, yeah, but do you want them coming in through like the worst crypto that's like the opposite of what we're trying to do? I'm like, yeah, but I... I think it's better to jump to the worst than not come at all. I, that's exactly what I said. Yeah, I agree with that. Exactly what you said. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. I said, I would rather them come, you know, than not be in it, you know? And I think unfortunately you've got, you have people um, that get into Ripple and then they say this is as far as I'm willing to go. And then they don't really, that's why you get those people that are like Ripple fanboys and stuff like that. You know, they say, this is it. I love Ripple. I don't really care, you know, about anything. I saw a guy, another influencer today talking about how he was only in it for the money. And that's fine if that's, it, uh, that's okay. No judgment from here, but that's not what I'm in it, in it for. So mm-hmm. I'm hoping that people will come into the space through Ripple and then, you know, take take the red pill or the blue pill. Take one of the pills. I don't remember which pill it is. I don't know which one it is. Yeah, yeah, but take the pill and come into the rabbit hole where we're at down here um, and, and learn really about the movement and the revolution that is trying to take place. So and I don't think it's slowing down anytime soon. The, the market has been slow, but, you know, the, the evolution of cryptocurrency has not been. I totally agree. I, I, I just want people to be in it and I want everyone to just enjoy, like, when I go, I like to travel a lot, and obviously it's different currencies, especially when you go across the border. Even from England, because we don't have euros, so we can't use the same currency. But I just end up in my bag having coins that are absolutely worthless right now, yeah. purely because the um, exchange points they don't exchange coins. So I've just got the bunch of coins, and I feel bad throwing it away because it's money. But then I'm never ever gonna use them again. Yeah. So. It, one of those things I hope that crypto will be able to improve. Do you do because you think do you think one day that Binance will have a bin and you can come dump those in there and convert it to Binance coins? I love the idea. <laughs> that is for sure. Yeah, that's uh, actual Binance that. dust. Yeah. Binance like, bin. Yeah, Binance bin. How about that? Hey, Binance. CZ, if you're watching. Binance already got a bin. <laughs> Throw it out there. I don't know how it works. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah, I mean, it's definitely, if you do a lot of traveling, I mean, you see it. I mean, that's why people, um, what's up, Jack? Good to see you. That, that's why people, you know, they, they bring back money from other countries as souvenirs, you know, because once they leave the borders, it's worthless. And, you know, most people who travel, like, yeah, you might have a country, well, I, I'll speak for America. I don't know how it is in Europe because the countries are all so close. So, like, it's almost like traveling states here, you know. Um, but in America, like, you know, you go to Mexico, you go to Canada, maybe you might go to some Caribbean countries, but you're probably not going to frequent any other country. You're going to go one time and visit it. And that's going to be it. Cause you know, we're all isolated over here and you got to, you know, flights are expensive and the whole nine yards. So, um, you know, it's definitely really crazy how, you know, you, you just have all this money you can't do anything with, you know, and that's the beautiful thing about digital currency. I just, it's so crazy to me to think 
that like in 50 years we would still be exchanging paper and metal for value. Like I just don't see that happening, you know? Technology is evolving too much and it's like what what blow, always did blow my mind even before I got into crypto is I looked on the money and I was like how does this money got more value than this just because someone printed yeah. 25? Like that always blew my mind and now I'm into crypto I completely understand it and it annoys me so much. I just I just hate the concept of money. God, that sounded so terrible. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, I just do. It, it, You're communist. <laughs> Please don't say that. <laughs> Especially that you know I'm not English, so communist is not close to my heart. But. You know. <laughs> Well, speaking of England, what I, I read an article, and um, I'm not really sure exactly the details of it. I saw the headline. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just steal a headline here. And they're basically trying to talk about how um, like Brexit could affect cryptocurrency in England. Do you have any thoughts on that? Is that still a... Yeah. Okay, I go ahead. I've a video about it, actually. Oh, really? Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so basically, there won't be much... I think they're going to try and make the whole Brexit situation a little better by purely not trying to push too much taxation onto crypto. And that's what they've been doing so far. Interesting. I haven't been taxed on it. Um, but at the same time, I haven't made a ridiculous amount of money. But trying to make it free for be freer for people to invest into it. England is very pro-blockchain. Uh, they uh -huh. actually love it. They keep using it. Barclays Bank is invested into it they I don't remember exactly what they're using but there is something recently uh, that they've added onto their payment systems probably ripple because it's a bank um <laughs> but england is very free about it and they really like the whole concept of it and how it can possibly improve just the functionality of it especially they're trying to get away from the eu that apparently is so bad <sighs> so yeah i'm not exactly pro brexit so i'm, uh, I'm a bit angry about it but it's a different story because I have to get British citizenship now, so it's really annoying. For me. Yeah, so you're not you're not from there originally. No, no. no Where are you I'm, from? Um, guess you never guess. Um, Europe. You in Europe? Um, Portugal. Nah. Um. Other side. Other side. Belgium. <laughs> no. Isn't that on the other side? It's in the middle. It's in the oh, middle. um. Yeah, I went the right direction. Okay, um, Poland. Yeah. Boom. Bow. How about that? How about nice. that? But don't tell anyone because I haven't actually told on my channel that I'm so. Yeah, know, well, I'm gonna laugh about it. But yeah, we'll keep it under um, I went to uni six years ago. Spent Ooh, a lot I can't of believe I got that. Me. You're impressed with you're impressed with my uh, European geography. You have to admit it. I went I went from the east all the way to the. From the west all the way to the east. <laughs> my geography is so good. I don't even know my east from my west, but that was good. I I hit the far west, the middle, and then I went the far east. How about that? I am impressed. You took small steps. So yeah. Small steps. No, really good actually. Really good. So that's why communism and stuff like that. Poland was. A oh place. yeah. Yeah. Um, no, and I'm moving for uni, and now I'm enjoying it, and my life is completely. If someone told me. Then I'll be live streaming about this cryptocurrency, and I'll be having two dogs, and I'll be a full-time engineer. I told them they're absolutely lost their mind. Yeah. And here I am, loving my life. Can't imagine my life without crypto right now. If you would have told me a year ago <laughs> that I would have a YouTube channel, and it would be my full-time job, I would have told you that you were absolutely insane, that there's no way. So I try. I did a YouTube channel before, and it was terrible. It was a huge failure. Um, and, uh, I, I never thought I would give it another go, but, um, I always found it like the reason why it was such a, well, it was a bad niche first of all, but I, I don't know. I just had a really hard time translating my personality onto camera. You know, like it's really hard to sit and talk to your camera. Like it's a human, you know? Yeah. Like there's no one in the room and you can just see your face like moving around. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's like, you feel like you just want to like be like, hello, my name is BitBoy. Like you want to be robotic about it, but you literally have to talk to your, like, to your computer like you would talk to your friends and it's really bizarre and that's probably why we're all a little crazy so <laughs> yeah, you have to be you literally have to yeah be it doesn't work besides i think everyone in crypto is a bit dixie because everyone's going for a bit dixie yeah <laughs> a 
bit Dixie. I like that. That's funny. Crazy. Is that yeah. not how you call it? Dixie? Maybe it's an English thing. Oh, it's That's an crazy. English thing. It's it's an English thing for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've probably said it wrong. You know, I do have a tendency. Oh, dit Ditsy. Ditsy. Yeah. I thought you said Dixie with a with an X. Yeah, I think I've mistaken one of the takeaway chicken places, Dixie Chicken with Ditsy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dit Ditsy, D I T S Y, means you're a little loopy. See, that's why live li streams are amazing because you can't cut it out. You oh, no, it's good. It's it's wonderful. I mean, that's that actually is going to be the part of the live stream that gets the most, you know, viewers is that right there. And you're going to be known as the Dixie Girl. And it's going to be awesome. I'm going to love it. <laughs> Crypto Dixie. Crypto Dixie. That's actually a really good name. Some, someone out there right now, I'm going to look right in the camera, start a channel called Crypto Dixie. We want to see it. So, yeah, that's awesome. Well, cool. Well, we, we've hit about an hour here. So, you have anything else that you, you know, want to talk about or particularly you want to yeah. say? Where are you off to next? I saw you were on Lion Queen Summit and looked up. <sighs> so fun. Like, this, tra traveling around is really fun. So, um, I've got a super... Under wraps thing I can't really talk about, but I will be in LA um, next weekend. And then I will be in Las Vegas from Halloween to November 5th. So those are going to be the next two places I'm going to be. So really looking forward to going to LA because like I have this huge group of crypto friends, including the Coin Boys and Crypto Breakfast and a lot of those guys that are out there. And so now I get to go out there, which is going to be really fun. So it's not necessarily for a conference. But definitely going to hang out with all those dudes while I'm out there. I'm super stoked about that. So, but I, I love going to these conferences. It's so much fun. Like, look, guys, I could, I do nonstop crypto research. Like, it has, you know, totally consumed my life. I don't go out there to listen to people speak. You know, I don't go out, I don't go to conferences to hear this project talk or this project talk. Like, I didn't get that information anywhere. I go to hang out with the crypto bros, you know, and the bro chachas. That's what I call the, the lady. What's that? Do you have a Telegram group, Crypto Bros? I do not. I, I have a friend who has a YouTube channel called Crypto Bro, so um, I can't steal that from him. But And I have a new term for for no-coiners. Instead of calling them no-coiners because it sounds offensive, we call them non-crypto bros now. So. Non-crypto bros. Non-crypto bros. I was actually thinking about it today. A no-coiner. Do you call it someone who's got no cryptocurrency at all in the slightest, not invested, or just someone who hasn't got a Bitcoin? Oh, a no-coiner, a no-coiner technically, which it sounds so offensive now that I say it this way. A no-coiner is someone who, to me, it's weird. And this is why we need to draw a distinction between um, no-coiners and people that are against crypto. Because I refer to anyone who doesn't own crypto as a no-coiner. Like, I call my wife a no-coiner, and she's not against crypto by any stretch of the imagination. She doesn't own any. But there are some people out there that do deserve the title no coiner. Like those are people who don't have crypto and they speak out against it and they want it to fail. Like I ain't got time for you if that's who you are. You know what I mean? If, if you're against this movement, if you know about it, understand it, and you're against it, then I ain't got time for you. You know what I mean? There's a single person who understood blockchain or cryptocurrency, the whole concept of it, and was against it. If you don't like it, you just don't understand it. I what? sound like such a maximalist now, but yeah, that's it's just a, like that's what CZ said. Yeah, CZ said that in a tweet, and and yes, I I would tend to agree with that on the surface for the common person, but there's definitely a lot of people out there, such as Warren Buffett, Jamie Dimon, uh, a lot of people out there who actually do understand. Do, do understand what it is and that don't want it to succeed. So, um, you know, there's there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of fear of what would happen um, because guess what? Government government loses control as well to some extent um, where it comes to taxes. Of course, they're going to be scared of it. Yeah, so there, are, so there are people that do fit that bill, but for the most part, you know, you're right. The, the normal person who doesn't have a vested interest on the financial side from a central banking perspective – or from like a government perspective, like, yeah, the, the normal person should be for it because we're trying to boot all those people out. But those people, of course, don't want it to succeed because they lose their jobs. So, well, cool. All right, Sarah. Well, it has been so good having you on the show. Um, really excited. We got to do this again sometime. This was a fun. This was like one of the fastest hours that um, I've done on a, on a live stream. I believe it was an hour. It's, it's crazy, an hour. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
So, but I know we're going to start losing people if we don't get off. <laughs> that, that's how it goes. About an hour, people are like, all right, I've spent way too much time. And I understand it. I mean, everybody's got stuff to do. So, um, tell everybody where they can find you real quick. So, you can find my YouTube channel, All Combust Ladies. I also make videos on the All Combust, on the main channel. I've got my little uh, session over there with pros and cons of certain cryptos. I recently do Apollo Currency, which is a bit controversial. Yeah, it is. Founder. And... Um, on Twitter, you can find me at Sarah, and I'll post lots of stuff there. It's recently, my Twitter's been doing really well. I think I found my flow and my yeah. personality. In it. So definitely visit me there and let me know what you want me to review next. All right, guys. All right, thanks a lot, Sarah. Look forward to having you on again. It was great. Thanks. All Bye. right. Bye. Bid boy out.